Hi everyone and welcome to this my video on interpreting transition matrices. Yep, my name is Darren from MathsGuru, really good to see you. I can't see you, weird thing to say at the start of the video, but hopefully you just let me run with it. Um, did I say I was Darren from MathsGuru? You're going to say what's MathsGuru? And I'm going to say it's my little corner of the internet where the whole general maths course is, VCAR, worked exams, question solutions, downloadable notes for your summary book, so, so much more. So if you head over there, absolutely free to sign up. But before you go, a, watch the video. C, uh, no, A, watch the video. B, if you can do me a massive favor and tell your teachers about this resource. Have a look at the video and see whether you've learned anything from it. And if you have, tell your teachers. I know that sounds really sad and I, like, only four of you are gonna do it, all right, if I actually twisted your arms. But they are paying a fortune for things like Ed Rolo and other resources. And to be honest with you, it's just a little bit on my own butt. Uh, I actually think this is probably as good, if not better. So let the teachers have a look at this resource and, and it could help uh, so many other students in other year levels and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's really needy. Yes, I know you are too cool for school, but so very few people actually subscribe or let me know they're watching the videos and it gives me a huge thrill and actually it makes it worthwhile. Um, sitting here recording these videos, talking to myself is really quite sad and lonely and, and I am literally actually saying that out loud. So if you can click that subscribe button, turn off notifications if you want. I promise you I do not spam, I just upload content um, and I just want to help as many kids as I can. Right. I can hear you crying, or at least switching the video off. So let's make a start. We are going to interpret a transition matrix and transition diagram. If you have no idea what that means, then go back to my previous video. Where? Mathsguru.com. I keep saying that, and I've gone really high-pitched and whiny. Let's recap what we did in the last video. Anyway, this thing here is called a transition diagram. It basically shows the transitions from states. And this particular example was about me starting a car hire company in Bendigo and Colec. And basically, yeah, uh, this loop here said that 90% of the cars that started in Colec ended in Colec. This said that 80% of the cars that started in Bendigo ended in Bendigo. And that 20% of the cars that started in Bendigo finished in Colec and 10% started in Colac and finished in Bendigo. So there is a constant change going on, and transition diagram is just basically showing the changes from one state to another. And these percentages relate to the percentages of cars that started in each place at the beginning of the week and ended in there, right? So really, really important. What we notice is that when we could do a transition matrix, our columns all added to one, we had our order was really important. Our columns were where we started and our rows were where we finished. And the order here and the order here should really mimic each other to make life a little bit easier to read. Those were the basis and it's gonna be so important for everything else that comes up. So let's go straight into this because we already know the basics. We've watched the previous video, we've, we've, we've listened to me wet on there. The following transition matrix T and its transition diagram can be used to describe the weekly pattern, and again, that's quite important, the weekly pattern of rental car returns in three locations, Aubrey, Wodonga, and Banala. So here is my transition matrix. Here is my transition diagram. Use the transition matrix T, and generally speaking, you've got to now get used to being able to read and understand what that says there. Use the transition matrix T and its transition diagram to answer the following questions. What percentage of cars rented in Wodonga? All right, so it's got to be rented in Wodonga, and I'm now going to do rented in Wodonga, and I'm going to highlight that column there. Are predicted to be returned to Albury, right? So Albury is this first value here. I'm not going to write 0.05. That's not a percentage, right? That's a proportion. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to write that as a percentage of 5%. Being able to convert between those two is important. Just multiply by 100. Banala. Wodonga to Banala. Now again, don't get tricked. Wodonga to Banala. We're looking for the intersection there. 0.15 would be 15%. And Wodonga to Wodonga, which is going to be this middle value here, is going to be 0.8, which would be 80%. So being able to read that is really important. And switching between the two, again, massively important. Right, let's see. Use the transition matrix again. 200 cars were rented in Aubrey. Now, the reason we're telling you it's 200 cars is because we're now going to ask you to use the percentages. Oh, 200. <laughs> I'm saying percentages. 200 cars is because I'm going to use percentages to help me work this out. Right, 200 cars were rented in Albury this week. So what I'm gonna do now is to make my life easier, I'm gonna highlight my Albury column. 